This here is a Presto 75A disc recording lathe dating from around 1938. This particular one um, came over from the United States. Um, so it was meant to spin at 33 and 78 RPM when powered by 60 Hz mains. It has a synchronous AC motor which logs to the um, line frequency. So the first thing we did was to machine a new capstan which gives it 33 and 45 RPM. Now it's spinning, but it's not yet touching the rim of the platter. Now it's touching, so the platter's spinning. This is 45 RPM. And it's now powered by 50 Hz mains with a step down transformer that we made and installed inside the box. As you can see, the mat is not particularly flat, but that's not much of an issue. It's got a 16 inch platter, so it'll do any size of a blank disc from 5 inch CDs basically to 16 inch blanks if you can find them. We've changed quite a few things on this machine such as the plate on the side which we made uh, to hold an IC power connector and a fuse. What was originally there was a um, kind of plate that had a lot of um, audio connectors on it that were only wired so it didn't make any sense so we basically installed this which makes it a lot more useful. It gives you the option to record outside in or inside out and in the middle there's a neutral position where nothing actually happens with the um, overhead that holds the head. It is uh, fitted with an RCA mono cover head at the moment, which is another 1930s item. And uh, we have also installed a plate for um, the connector to the cover head. This cable here basically comes from the cutting amp and um, yeah, it, uh, next to it you have a fuse which is for cutter head protection. You can drop and lift the head by means of a lever on the side and you can basically place it on any position you want and engage the lever to start the thing moving. This lathe is fixed pitch at 96 lines per inch, which works out around 3.78 lines per millimeter. Now, due to the construction, the pitch is very accurate on this lathe, and it's quite widely spaced, so you could technically cut double groove records quite accurately on that, and I have actually done this um, on a few occasions. When you want to finish the recording, you can simply move this back to neutral position and it will do a locked groove. And of course you can cut as many locked grooves as you like on this by simply just placing this where you want, dropping the head, waiting for one revolution, lifting it again. So let's do a test cut. So that's spinning at 45 RPM. This is some anti-static treatment for the surface of the blank. The edge is a bit rough. Now we're going to be doing an inside-out cut. So we start at the inside of the record. Now it's engaged and the head's down so it's actually cutting some grooves. You can hear it, it's very faint but that's the head working.
I don't know if you can see the grooves. We're cutting from a Casio keyboard, which goes straight into a custom cutting amp. No EQ, nothing else happening. It's quite a simple setup. You can see that the head is moving from the inside towards the outside of the blank. That's what we mean by inside out cut. And that's it. It's done. So we disengage the overhead so we can move it out of the way. And this is the best part. When I stop the motor and disengage it, Look how long this keeps on spinning. Now that's what I call a bearing in good condition. And it keeps going. Still going. I think I'm gonna go grab some lunch and then come back and hopefully it'll have stopped by then. There you go. Now let's go have a listen. <laughs> 